So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different. I've been talking a lot about gear. I've been waiting for my new Nikon Z6 to arrive, which it actually has. I just got it yesterday and um, I'm really excited to dig into this camera, but uh, that's going to be for the next video. Today I wanted to talk about a simple tool in Photoshop that I used for the first time when we got back from our trip down to Florida. And I want to show you how easy it is to replace a sky in your images. I'm Bill, half of Bill and Eric Photography, and we usually do tutorials and gear reviews and take you on our little photo trips and things like that. So today we're gonna to talk about editing. Now, I use Lightroom, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time for all of my editing for everything that I do, whether it's portraits, um, commercial work, product work, uh, landscape photography, I edit everything in Lightroom. On occasion, I do have to go into Photoshop, whether you have to fix something or remove something or there's something that has to be done. And I find Photoshop confusing. I don't use it enough to be proficient in it. And I have a, a hard time learning how to use it. So if you're part of like Adobe's Creative Cloud membership and you have the Photoshop Lightroom package, you probably know what I'm talking about. You may do a lot of your editing in Lightroom. Photoshop's there, but every time you jump into it, it gets very confusing very quickly. This tool is for people like me and possibly you who don't really use Photoshop, but can quickly make a, a big change to their images. This update was in the latest Photoshop update that I made about a month ago. I went down to Florida. Um, Eric and I were going to take some pictures of Walt Disney World for a project that we're going to be working on. And we had horrible weather. We, we walked into the Magic Kingdom and it was gray, overcast, dreary day. So what do you do in a situation like that? I'm in one spot. I hadn't been there for almost a year and a half. I'm not going back anytime soon and I wanted to capture certain images. So what do you do in that situation? This could be anything. You're maybe on a trip with your family to some far off vacation destination that may be a once in a lifetime trip. And uh, Mother Nature doesn't cooperate. So you can do things while you're editing to make the images more usable or, you know, if you're working and you have to create something and the weather's just not there, you can use these tools. So this is the sky replacement tool. Now I'm gonna jump into the computer here and I'm gonna show you what I was confronted with and how I, you know, changed this. There, now I'm a novice in this. I've, this, I've only used it four times, I think, so far. I don't know how all the tools work, but I wanted to give you some idea of you know, where it is, how you can use it, then just some things to think about when you're actually using the, you know, they give you presets almost of skies that you can drop into your image. And I believe you have the ability to use any sky that you want, um, but I didn't want to get into that. I just wanted to quickly see if I can make some changes. It's fun to play with, and uh, you just want to try to keep the tones balanced, okay? Because sometimes in an image you'll have, you put a big blue sky in, but then the foreground or whatever's underneath that sky looks dreary because it's, you know, it's not, it doesn't match. So you either have to make everything match or you have to pick a sky that's going to go with your foreground or whatever's in the image that you're not replacing. Okay, so let's jump into the computer here and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're here in Lightroom and I'm going to try to quickly go through this, but I want to give you a couple examples of what I was talking about. This first image is when I walked into the Magic Kingdom. I have a very flat foreground here and a gray drab sky and this is one I want I was hoping for a beautiful blue sky uh, so I wanted to see if I could change this and this is what I changed it to here so I what I did was I started to adjust the tones and the colors in the foreground and then I jumped into Photoshop and replaced the sky and I put this sky in there which gives it a very whimsical you know fantasy like look I also warmed up the foreground a little bit with the adjustment brushes in, in Lightroom and it balanced the image out and I think it looks okay here's I'm gonna actually go into Photoshop and show you how I did this on this next image so here's the original again not much going on here it's kinda of flat have a couple of people around just milling around over here this is the final image I took the people out in Lightroom and then I changed the sky so let's jump into Photoshop quickly Okay, here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to go to the Edit menu up on the top left here and go down and hit Sky Replacement. Now there's going to be all sorts of skies that you can choose in this drop-down panel here. You'll see this little arrow on the right. So these are the spectacular skies. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for blue skies. And we can grab this panel and move it over here so we see what we're doing. 
Now that doesn't look good, and that's not something I would use here. But let's look at blue skies. Now we could put a plain blue sky, but as you can see, you get some strange halos around the subject here. And that could be just the sky you chose. And there are adjustments in here to play with that. So the shift edge function will actually take care of some of that. But as you can see, the blue is bleeding onto the statue. So you really have to be careful with this. What I found is a sky that has clouds in it, like this one, seems to work a little bit better. Now there's still a little bit around the edges here that you can see. So I'm going to adjust that a little bit and then I'm going to adjust the scale. So I'm actually going to bring the clouds in so that you don't see the haloing as much. So something like this I think actually works pretty well. It looks natural, you don't see the haloing, and you can grab and move this. So whatever you want to do, if you want a, a little bit of blue, or you don't mind the white, you know, however you want it to look. So something like this is what I would do. I click OK, then I go back up to the file menu and just click Save head back into Lightroom, it's going to put a copy of it down here in my film strip. And then if I want to, I can continue editing it. Okay, so here's the copy. Now if there's something else I wanted to do to it, I could edit it, I could remove the people, you know, whatever I want to do, I'm back in Lightroom. I can adjust the shadows, you know, we can, then we can start messing around with it if we want. Here's another example of an image that the foreground I love. The castle looks nice and sharp. I shot this with the Z5 and the 50mm 1.8 at 1.8. Very, very sharp image. I'm loving the Z lenses that I have, but it's a little flat looking. So here's the sky I changed. I actually brightened up the castle a little bit, added some warmth to the image, and put a new sky in. And to me this looks pretty believable. So this is a great way to actually change your images. Um, you know, if you're in a location where you just you know, you're just stuck with bad weather and there's really nothing you can do about it. You can try to salvage these images. This one's a little bit different. So this was taken just as the sun went down. There was no sunset to speak of, just gray skies and kind of drab looking. But what I was able to do was find a sky that worked with the tones in this image. So this one, all I did was replace the sky here, but I used my adjustment brush and if you hover over the image, you can actually see the pins for the adjustments that I made. So on this one, in these spots, I added some temperature and some of the magenta tint to mimic the sky, like you would see it in a reflection and, you know, just a little bit, just to get the tones, you know, the way I wanted. So I think this one turned out really nice because the, the lighting that was in this image already actually works perfectly with the lighting in the sky here. Okay, so here's an image I took in New York City. And as you can see, I made a couple of adjustments already. I opened up the shadows a little bit, added a little bit to the whites, the blacks, um, a little bit of clarity, but I didn't touch the colors. What I did do was I added, if you can see here, I added a gradient filter where I added some warmth to the bottom of the image. But this sky is bland. It's not going to get any better looking. There's no clouds in it really. So this was a day where we didn't get a great sunset. But the bottom of the image I like. So let's go into Photoshop and see what we can do here. So here we are. And we're going to go to the edit menu. Sky replacement. Now this is going to put that blue sky in which is not going to look good. It doesn't look horrible. But this is not the image I'm going for. I have these warmer tones down below. So I want to change the sky. So I'm going to close the blue skies. Now, I don't know if any of these sunsets are going to work. Let's see, maybe this one. Now, something like that could work. I think that that doesn't look bad. And if you look, there's really not any haloing around the buildings. A really amazing tool. Now, I could leave this one. Or let's see what else they have. Let's see if there's any spectacular skies that would look good. Uh, I think this one, because of the colors, might work nicely. You have these darker tones down here and it actually matches really nicely. So now there's a few things you can do with this. The sky is this color. If we want to, we can brighten it up a little bit or we can tone it down. I don't think that looks as good. I'd rather it be on the brighter side. And these are going to become like the artistic choices you're going to make when you're editing. And we could add some warmth to it or we can go the other way and cool it down. 
That actually looks kind of cool. I kind of like it in the middle. I think something like that works. For me, this is a, a nice sky replacement. I think it looks natural. So what we're going to do here is we're going to click OK. I'm going to go back to File and hit Save. It's going to put another copy of that down in my film strip here. And then if I want to, I can continue editing it. Now, it's not the raw file, but I will be able to really work on it. And, you know, if I wanted to adjust the, the tones a little bit more or the colors or just a certain color. So let's see. Let's say if I wanted to take my adjustment brush and brighten up some portions of this image. You know, I can do that. Say over here. I want to open up the shadows there too. You know, if you hold down the Alt key, you can remove an adjustment also. So if you overdo it in certain spots, you can always remove it. You know, and you can really do whatever you want here. So if I wanted to add some color or desaturate it, you know, you can do whatever you want after you have the sky replaced. And now it looks pretty natural. And uh, once you start working with it, you can really adjust the image and make it perfect for yourself. So I hope the sky, you know, my rudimentary description of the sky replacement tool helps you out. Uh, but this is a fun little thing that if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription with Lightroom and Photoshop that you can start using right away. Very simple to use. So that was pretty cool, right? I mean, it's a, it's, I'm not, like I said, I'm new at this and um, I'm just wanted to maybe point you, some of you Lightroom users that have the ability to go into Photoshop every now and then. It's a fun tool to play with and, you know, hopefully it's something that can help you. I haven't done an editing video in a while, so it's fun to get into the computer and mess around with things. So the next video is going to be on the Nikon Z6 II. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to use it a little bit, get out and shoot, uh, you know, maybe just take some pictures of my kids, something just to see what the difference was from the Z5 that I just returned. Uh, I'm hoping the autofocus is much better on this camera. Everybody says it is, but we're going to see. So here I'm going to put the Lightroom uh, playlist that we have if you're looking to be, get better at photo editing and then over here I'm going to put uh, some of the Nikon Z videos that uh, I have done so far So if you want to get caught up to speed on the Z5 and why I didn't like it, uh, I'll put those here. Okay. See you in the next video